way rather than the other direction and they can make something happen on this map rather than the previous but yeah we're gonna get right into it similar lineups for both teams it seems like uh just switching out maybe a brimstone or excuse me the rays and a the reina on both sides for the engagers but yeah it seems like everything is just uh tip for that for what we've seen uh previously except for okay excuse me never mind the operator or the agent lineups have actually changed it not like overall but in the teams it looks like golf club is no longer playing the cypher but now i guess they they figured that he was fragging hard enough to be to warrant him playing the reina instead and now chicken sandwich sandwich can we can we look at that one more time sand sandwich chicken sandwich he's 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 the one playing the cypher yeah, looks like they had a bit of a sub in. Not really sure what happened there, but there we go. Our boy Golf Club Killer going on the sea, running and gunning as much as they can. It's looking really good for SMU right now. They need to get that plant down. Sage kind of dwelling a little bit there. The cat getting the kill onto Donut and a double kill with the smoke onto Gen Next. Woo! And Dorisa with a double kill and Cat with a single ending kill off. Flawless win. I wish I had my timer. I think that was, what, 30 seconds in total. Big yikes. Wow. Okay. That was a very quick pistol round, and I mean, that just overwhelmed British Columbia so much. Hopefully, they can take back from it. They have to go for an eco round this time, but, uh, you know, depending on how much SMU decides to buy in this first attacking round, our second attacking round could change how this next uh, game goes. But no, it looks like the attackers are only sticking to the classics this time. They chose the eco, and if they have to tie at any point, it might as well be 1-1. Yeah, that was it. That was a quick one. I mean, not much to be said. It's just tap, tap, tap from the back of sight and the raise bot coming in. Yeah, you don't really like to be on the opposite end of that thing. It's not really fun to go against. So, unfortunate by by SME that the two of them got caught by it, not even just one. But fair play to the raise. It's in the game, so might as well use it, right? We're fighting for two grand here, right? Prize pool of $2,000. First place tomorrow. It gets decided. It gets 1000 so that's pretty hefty sum of cash for it. it's like 200 in everyone's pocket so they're gonna be doing whatever they can and this time it looks yeah, like the attack bucks. is making something work two headshots from classics so keeping the man count into uh, in uh in lockstep but the health vastly in favor of the defenders so far and they still have the better guns so they should still be a defending win that's right it should still be a defending win and right now smu kind of struggling a bit not really finding a whole lot of positive engagement going towards b they're gonna rotate a long going onto a site but tripwires ahoy and a camera there they can leave a site alone on the defensive side but the Oof. quick rotate from Ecolypse taking down golf club killer at least one more on site he's gonna connect cat taking down chicken ten way wait no way <laughs> Ecolypse taking a Braborg. And that's it. The fuse round two goes back to the defenders on uh, British Columbia. I mean, that was a surprisingly closer round than I was expecting it to be. It wasn't quite a blowout on either side. Just the initial push was a little bit, you know, they got unlucky. They didn't realize the trip wires and cameras would all be prepped up for a fight. Had they gone see, this could have been a different story. Yeah, definitely. And like, you don't know where the cypher is going to be playing, right? Because you see some teams run them on A, which it looks like university of british columbia is doing right now you see some teams run them on c and we even saw a team run them on b once which that doesn't happen often but i guess it it's an option so it's out there but they just have to go for our game and try to read his positioning and it looks like uh i mean they probably have it's been two rounds and he's played on a so now trying for that garage split not gonna find anyone on the primary peak unless no someone's back so yep draws out a slow orb so it's good utility I don't think they use too much. They have a Silva drone going into the garage as well. I'm not going to spot the raise. I don't think it must have managed to turn right. Raise shoots it. That's a bit surprising. So she's going to give away her location there. But map control getting kind of also given up from the attacking side. Not wanting to stick around on C very much longer. They're just running A. I'm not sure if they have the information that this site is actually clear of men. Just players. But the the trips are still in wire. existence, so they should be reading that. Yeah, they find one, but good headshot from Eclipse and can't follow up. Yannick, I, I actually don't know how to pronounce the name, so I, I hope I'm doing it right if I'm doing it wrong, so please tell me. 
Brimstone. But he's able to follow up and now post plant four versus four. Four v four right now. Things are heating up a little bit. The A side plant going a lot more smoothly than it did last round. A lot of British Columbia kind of stuck up inside heaven, trying to poke out a little bit, but through the smoke, Hammer taking down Chicken. That's a fantastic guess in play. And there we go, he's gonna drop down and no, not gonna find anyone. He's gonna deny off of heaven, but A Long has some action. Cat taking down Prob Morgan, Kra, Golf Club Killer taking out Dorisa. Hammer with that, uh, Hammer at the very end with that Molly kill. That's going to secure three rounds in a row for uh, British Columbia over SA, um, SMU. That's a really good lead. Now, we've seen leads like this in the past, and like I said, the curse hasn't been broken. We're usually the team that gets that initial lead, keeps going, and wins the whole match. So far, I would say, you know, maybe uh, SMU kind of struggling with the rotates a little bit again. Uh, we saw that happen last game, but I believe they were attacking first as well last game against UC Berkeley. And they really like to just dedicate to a site. Uh, what we saw last game against Berkeley was that they would kind of hide around for a little bit and then just play more methodically and rush to the site and plant. And while they're getting the plants down and it's great, it's just they need to make that extra effort. But to be fair, playing Haven's also a really weird map compared to other Valorant maps as well. It's not mm. quite the same because you have a lot of rotate potential more than usual. Oh. Bit awkward in the garage. Shots not entirely landing because of those damage panels, but finally you're okay. Dursa takes some shots, but not too many to uh, follow up on. He wants to take the fight still. He's still brazen enough to go for another peek in the garage doors. I guess he's got the Reyna there behind him to support to go for a trade or whatever. I mean, she's a bit far away, but at least they're keeping presence on B, which is actually a really interesting read because there's so many attackers right now just bundled up in mid. The Brimstone just walks right through the Molotov, right through the Raised Grenade, is completely blind, and Cat just walks into him, takes his head off, and is able to get out of there intangibly. And now look at the stall. This is everyone held up by one Brimstone smoke. They have no idea what to do at this point. They can't really go for a rotate because they have no map control. They're going to try to back up towards Garage, but two players from the defense are already committing back towards C. They hear this utility being used inside the Garage, and this Phoenix, excuse me, this raise inside a C site that has been here all along is probably just going to shut it down. And with three, tagging on with Cat at the end, two players to finish off that round completely and take the fourth for the side of BC. Yeah, again, SMU kind of taking a little too long to rotate around, it seems, and that's perfectly fine. When they do get onto the site, they have a little bit more success, but British Columbia in just such a good position right now to get those fast rotates, and, and you know, I believe it was Durs' case, get a nice triple kill going into Garage. With eight seconds left in the prep phase, now's the time to figure out really what you need to do to fix up this 4-0, uh, you know, deficit against you, and it's, it's not too late. It's not too late. Unlike the last few games that we saw, there is a chance for SMU to bring it back again. Keep in mind, if they don't win this match, they are out of the tournament. Donut, though, could be pushing a short, and nothing's really going to be contesting him except for a Cypher tripwire. That Cypher, though, hiding on a short and a very... Ooh, that's a nice camera oh spot. God. Oh, wow, that's the best camera I've seen on Haven so far. Hiding around Basuki. Equal is kind of struggling in the Cyber Cage, taking down Golf Club Killer. He's going to be hiding in the smoke. They need to push up. Someone from SMU needs to push up Durza, though. Getting the kill on the donut. That's going to be the double kill from Ecolips. Taking down Chicken. That's going to be a triple kill from Eko. Taking down Yannick. And that's Hammer finishing it off on Braborg. Again, going for probably the worst. Uh, not the worst side, but getting a little unlucky there by going to the site most accurately defended by a Cypher. Really, C is your best option. You did get the plant down in A one round, but you got to rotate the B or C. That's where the majority of the team is, sure, but that Cypher is just stalling to the max, and it's hard to get over. Yeah, like, just looking at the nerdy stuff that this Cypher's putting down, I gotta admit, I have a lot of respect for him, for him as, a, oh, as a Cypher nice main. I might be a bit biased, but still. Yeah, the stuff that this guy's doing. He's, look at him, he's changing it up every single round, too. He's putting his cam in... Oh, he wants to put his cam inside short. I don't know what his call is, that there's no one aggressed here. But, I mean, just great reads all around right now from BC. Look at, like, he's already pushing. I don't know, again, I don't know how they know. But 
the entirety of SMU right now is aggressed up C long. They have the Sage here watching flank, which is kind of questionable. If she dies alone and there's no trade, that's a pretty big operator, or a pretty big agent to lose. Trying to work B site, kind of. The Cypher's behind now, and he's already got a backstab. Great shot in a donut. That's in one tap onto him. Tries to look for the Sage, too. And another great shot. This man's clean. He just wants the ultimate and wants to find out where everyone else is. And soon they're going to find out what they probably already knew. Everyone's towards the sea site. And Ecolepse is now holding the flanks. They cannot recommit to any other location because he's still inside the mid window holding it down. 40 seconds left. And it looks like, again, they're just lost. This reminds me of last game where it just stalls out so hard for the attack. But really, it doesn't look like they know what to do anymore. Yeah, these rotates are the hardest thing in Valorant to do. All of, I'm sorry, all of SMU have their ults, but they can't really use it with 20 seconds left. If they want to end the game really quick, British Columbia could just use that Brimstone Hellfire right now on C Long and just end the game right here. But no, instead, it looks like effectively SMU is trapped. The Cypher could be engaging. Ecolypse could be looking for that kill. Taking oh. one, taking no, not quite two. Ecolypse not taking out Golf Club Killer. Best Sweet Durs are doing it for them. <laughs> and hammer as well yikes and that's gonna be round number six in a row for british columbia university jake grief man just looking at their like, not even talking about the fact that they're reading their attacks properly and just basically perfectly but spectating them in first person just looking at their aim their cross placement everything is just so clean for british columbia they're just they are Yes. They're, they're gunners. I don't know what else you can say about that. I I'm, I don't entirely understand or know because I, I was admittedly, I gotta admit, I was in the shower when they were playing their first game, but I, I don't know how they lost their first game. Like, I'm scared to see what their first opponent would be like in the upper bracket because good grief, they are like beast here with the right now. I know exactly. You're gonna have to remind us who they lost to initially because if they lost to uh, Midland, it, it makes sense. They lost to Irvine. Oh, okay. So that's actually our next game. So tune in for that, guys. Don't go Ooh. anywhere after this one, which uh, might end up ending fast because it looks like this round is still balling in the same direction as it has before. Hammer, you know, Molotov, and that completely stalls out the push of four different players. Props to, um, oh, no. to SMU, though. They have tried multiple different sites in multiple different ways so far. We've seen an A push, a C push, and then a B push three different rounds in a row. Unfortunately, none of it has really been sticking most of the team, though, stuck on the B entry site, and that's the Eagle that's taking out Chicken. Whoa, that was a crazy angle. He picks up the, I'm sorry, he has the Vandal still. B site still being held down, and that's going to be Hammer. Whoa, double headshot with the Vandal taking down Golf Club Killer. The Golf Club definitely struggling a little bit more than we saw last game. He was the Cypher. So he played a little bit more dialed back, much more of a supportive role. And while he's three and seven, <laughs> oh, no. the, the score line overall for SMU is just, um, it's not ideal. Ecolypse though, with 10 and two, going with a five KD, that's getting pretty close to what we saw in the past with Thomas is what? With his, um, his like ultimate 13 and 0, KD. something like that. Yeah, something crazy, something unreal, something I could never get in the FPS game. But with that Cat's being still. Cat's in the running for that right now. I don't know if you notice. Oh. Cat's eight and zero. I guess oh, you can yeah, say Gunner's right. one and zero, but like he hasn't. He, you he can't he can't do anything. Gunner is literally not doing anything. It's not a bad thing. It's just because his team is doing everything, so he's got <laughs> nothing left to clean up. Uh, it's just, this is really rough for hey, uh, on, for Let Southern Methodist. Yeah, I mean he, he's hunting for some action but hammers is taking it all like you saw him close out last round as well and he's sage on c like what are you gonna do teammates have b site held down you don't need to rotate don't want to give up c just in case that the attackers might end up going there for a plant just in case but donut uh, though nope. oh. donut though rotating over to a long tripwire is going to be there again same story Somewhat seeming like the same exact ending. He takes down the tripwire, but Cypher knows. Cypher always knows. And Ecolypse getting spotted out and unfortunately not able to take it down on Donut. Donut taking down Ecolypse. That could be USM's chance. I'm sorry, SMU's chance to bring it back. The plant is down. The rotate for um, British Columbia is not looking great. They're stuck. Well, it's going to be going heaven. It's going to be that Brimstone. Hellfire goes down. It's going to completely miss. 
And there we go, Golf Club Killer taking down Hammer. That's huge. That's your top frag. Durza taking down Dona, and Durza with the triple kill on the Janik. Yikes. What was looking so positive now? Oh, no. Looking so bad. Reyna shut down completely. Golf Club Killer <laughs> doesn't know what to do. He's stuck. And that's going to be round eight in a row going towards British Columbia University. You gotta, you gotta feel for him. I mean, when that wall goes up and you have an operator of all guns, I mean, you know, that you just nothing. It's just, you're just like, oh, well, crap, because if that's it, there's nothing you can do. I, you gotta, you gotta be able to analyze though those little, little tiny nuances again. Like it just tends to be those things, small little things. In that case, they didn't, oh, they could have there. optimized a tiny bit, like just a teensy tiny, like. You notice when the brimstone ran into sight as well, it was kind of a godsend that Silva was able to win the fight onto Eclipse. Like, that's not something that many players have done in this match, but well done to him for being able to just take the one on one and be just come out on top. But at the end of the day, they, they still. Their map control was a bit lackluster. They didn't understand where people were coming from on the defense to be able to deny all that presence. This time, it's going a bit better. Less map control even still. Look at the Reyna flanking behind them. It's good two picks. And this is even more important as well. Golf Club getting that flank kill means that they have information on their backs as well. There's probably not going to be two in their behinds. I, I, okay, that sounds wrong. But you get the idea. There's not going to be two behind them. The two, in fact, are going to be inside the C site. And knowing that they didn't commit, they're going to be lost. Like the defenders are this time. They're going to be the ones wondering, where do we go? Where is the place of... Where's the point of ignition? And now it's going to be found. It's probably going to be understood that they're going A, which is good for the attack. They've gotten here in time before the defenders have gotten to rotate. And again, that pick behind them and those two entries on a site were huge. And that's probably what's going to win them this round if they manage to secure this post plant positioning. But Whoa, Hammer's making Hammer. something work, at least for the two versus three. Now, what more can they do? The smokes go down to cut off some line of sight. And Eclipse with his clean headshot so far, he's going to take another. Donuts in the one versus one now. He's taking out Hammer, and he makes it work as well, of taking the first round for the side of B, or excuse me, for the side of SMU. BC has plenty of rounds to go around. But thank goodness for them, they're able to take one before the half goes out. And yeah, those picks in front of the site, taking out the Ray's ulting as well, they were able to trade two versus one. And the player behind, I think it was Kat, her first death unfortunately it was the round where her death probably mattered the most on the flank but yeah that opened up the entire rest of the map because the thing is when you have that kind of flank going on you have to make sure that you don't die because if you die then the, the maps is open right if you don't die and you reveal yourself in the flank that means that they they understand that you're behind them and they understand that they have relinquished all the map control and they can't go back without spending five years checking corners but once you lose your life like that they just have free roam of the entire map, and that's the thing that just won them that round. And the spike is already down on C site. It's looking pretty good for British Columbia right now, just mowing down uh, SMU on the other side. Donut, last one alive. He got a fantastic save last time. He's going to deny that plan, at least temporarily. That's big. Now Durza. And that might be what it takes. Oh, nope, the defuse no. still going down from Hammer. And that's going to be round oh. number 10. Going to uh, British Columbia, but Donut, man. Donut, those last two rounds, the saving grace for SMU. Did such a good job about taking down Eclipse and Hammer at the very last second on A site. I honestly thought that was going to be an 11 0 scoreline that we would be seeing. But no, he staved it off for a little bit at least. And now we have a 9 1 scoreline coming out from University of British Columbia. And they're looking yes, really good. Here. I mean, it's it's a game of rotates, pretty much. You know, the aggressive plays from SMU getting shut down really quick on C. They might try to go for a slow push again because that aggressive play doesn't work out. And it, it's hard to say what's going to happen in the beginning. It could really go anywhere. We've seen those late game rotates to A, despite Cypher having the trip wires everywhere. And it's worked out in their favor at least once. R literally only once. Literally right once. now. But they're they're looking around for those plays right now, and they do have the gun skill, especially Donut, to bring it back. It's just getting that right position at the right time. But Donut with okay. the sun out of the ghost. Okay. Taking down Durza. That's one of your top fraggers on UBC. And losing him is going to be incredibly important. 
With that being said, a lot of UBC is getting pushed back now towards C site. This could be a great time to rotate onto B. With that being uh, said, ooh, the Molly weird. comes out, Hammer is securing it with Chicken. And the Cypher uh -oh. all comes out as well. They know where everyone's at. The spike is trapped in Garage. Uh, everyone top of Garage window. Big yikes. That's going to be the rain of poking out a little bit, but not going to be securing the kill. B or C, it's going to be death. Cat taking down Praborg. Lena might push and take down Janik, but no. Golf, golf Club Cutter taking him down. Oh, that's bad. Where? Hammer. Hammer. Oh my god. It's a 3v2 right now. Gunner still looking around with that up. Trying to find whoever the next victim might be. And that's going to be. No, it misses. It misses. Janik taking down Gunner in a fantastic trade. That's me, Eclipse taking down Donut. That's your top bragger down. Yannick, last one alive. The Cypher upload happened. Salt in the wound. They didn't need to do that. But he's effectively trapped, and the defenders will win round 11. No spike, no mercy. 10 1 so far for the University of British Columbia against the, uh, Southern Methodist University. It's it's hard to say because like again, sort of like last game, the ro the the rotates look okay. It's just uh, getting having trouble getting that initial frag, and even when they did, just you know playing on top of that and playing aggressive to, you know, take advantage of that lack of man count is something that some teams, especially on the attack, can't really do. Yes. Yeah, I don't like. I don't think it's anything like super big that's like glaring like rotations or whatever i think they're doing that okay but i think the one round they won and then the round they lost directly after that really showcases it it, it showcases what they can do right and what they do wrong and what they need to do more if they want to take more rounds look at that 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 goes that that as well and even more they're pushing into a with all these strip wires they need the entries and the one time they get the entries that they got or they needed they just won the round straight up but this time Along with the two previous rounds, they are the ones that get entried on. I think that just that uh that really emphasizes the fact that the the players, just the individual skill on the side of BC is just superior so far to SMU. And it, like that's again, that's nothing on their their overarching like strats or whatever. It's just everyone's just winning fights. And so far, Gunner, the one player on C, which is the site that apparently they're going to aggress on. It's the site of contention right now is unfortunately going to be timinged and they're going to make it into the site before he's going to know and he's the only one so far that hasn't been tested because the only times he's taken fights he's taken what four fights he's won two of them lost two of them this time yeah he just gets unlucky and they they, they let them in the site but it is a four versus two retake if you want to count gunner out of it which i really don't think you can because again, he's at, he hasn't been tested so we don't know what he can do yet it's at minimum but three versus four or a three versus two and now a three versus zero because they're able to just want that retake because they can, they can gun better so far and there's no response they're keeping four players live keeping it clean and now second half this is where you're truly backed against the wall smu you are 11 one down if you lose a pistol and you have to save one more on the defense you're out of hope it's 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 kind of game there and imagine imagine being gunner having a team so again, I'm not trying to trash talk Gunner. He's probably good, but he just, he hasn't been able to play. Like, let the man play the game. <laughs> Imagine having two kills and being 11 one up. Like, what do you do? Like, you can't can't do anything. It feels bad. Well, in, in Gunner's defense, though, he is Sage. He is primary support. So you know, yeah. getting the walls, the heals, the revives are a lot more important than getting straight up kills. But exactly. To be fair, I haven't really seen a lot of that either. But you brought up a great point earlier where. USM, I'm sorry, SMU has a lot of success when they get those initial entry kills. Unfortunately, we've only seen that in maybe two or three rounds, and those rounds I usually lead to a bomb plant, a spike plant, and while that's really good, it's just it's hard to capitalize from there on out. But it's that road from getting the entry kill oh, to that spike plant is where they struggle the most. And with that being said, Golf Club Killer going down, Durza on the pistols, taking down e oh, for Ecolips, taking down Donut double kill from Ecolips. Taking on Yannick, it's already not looking great. That's be Chicken barely holding on with Durza taking down. Yikes. And so they did lose Durza. They did lose, lose Durza. It's a 4v2. Praborg looking around right now, unfortunately, getting pinched out. Ecolypse taking down Praborg. It's down to this Chicken. The last one alive, blocked off by the Sage from Gunner. And my boy Gunner <laughs> taking down Chicken, getting the uh, round ending kill.
Ladies and gentlemen, 12 in one. It is a long road ahead for Southern Methodist University. If they can't bring it back this round, unfortunately, Promo Gaming has to say goodbye to them for this tournament. Of course, they can always come back for future tournaments, but you know, there's overtime for one round. If they can't survive this in sudden death, they are out of the tournament for today. With that being said though, if University of British Columbia can get this final round, they will be moving on into the loser's bracket. Revealing area. Five man mini racing, playing it slow, but as soon as I say that, there's a entries on a golf club and it's just been unlucky for him these last two rounds, like with the classic as well. Nothing he could do about the raise bot last round. This round he just gets completely bamboozled, peaks at the wrong time. And especially on that agent as well, Reyna, I mean, nothing more you can provide other than getting kills. So the fact that he's not doing that detriments his team a whole lot. Ecolips, of course. Of course, he has a rifle second round. Why, why wouldn't you when you can get all those headshots? And they're just making all the entries happen. One versus five now. What more can Donut do? He's been the savior for the one round that they have won. But now he needs to retake against five with a player beside him. He's not going to look away. And the attackers with a flawless round at the end. UBC taking that against SNU extremely dominantly. I don't know how to. There's 